Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to control the speed of a brushless DC model using Arduino thanks to CanOpen protocol. So here you can see I have my setup. I have Arduino Uno, a CAN shield, and the connection of the CAN to Solo Uno, and the motor here. So as you can see here, the wiring of Arduino to Solo is pretty simple. There is only three wires and Two of them are for the CAN line, CAN high and CAN low, and one is the ground. So it's pretty simple. All the commands are coming digitally from Arduino to Solo. Then they are processed here, and then they are applied to the motor. So you can see the motor now is following the profile I've made in Arduino. These are the wirings of the motor. This is the wiring of the HAL sensor of the brushless TC motor. And in this video, we're going to command from Arduino Uno through CAN bus using can open software layer to Solo Uno to control the speed of a brush DC motor in a profile type of shape. So the speed will increase, decrease, and a bunch of commands that I'm going to show you later on in the code. And then we have also here provided a brake system so we can increase the torque on the shaft of the motor. So hopefully we can show you a better demonstration. The only thing you need to make sure about before running the code is Solo actually is in closed loop mode. You can achieve that by putting pin number 5 down, as you can see here on the piano switch. And the other pins, like if you stay in digital mode, they actually don't matter. But here, I'm putting pin number 4 down to tell to Solo if in case it's in analog mode, goes into a speed mode that I'm going to operate in. And then pin number 1 and 2 to be selected in a way that I'm selecting a normal brushless or permanent magnet synchronous motor, pressing pin number one down and two up. So this is the only thing that you need to make sure to have a proper piano switch setup. So now I'm gonna show you how actually things are working and how actually we are sending commands from Arduino through CAN bus. And as you know, Arduino doesn't have a native CAN bus. You have to put a shield on top of it and the shield actually works with SPI communication that is converted to CAN through a chip from microchip MCP family. And the sheet that you see here is actually doing that. So the SPR line of the Arduino is sending the characters to the chip and the chip is converting them to the CAN to be sent to the CAN bus of Solo. So the code is actually done through our extensive library for Arduino that includes UART and CAN open. And if you go to our GitHub, you can find it here. You see the code that we have provided includes the communication through UART and can open through the chips that I've just mentioned. And you can find also many examples for both of these communications for can open and UART. And you can see here, I'm kind of including the, uh, the library of can open. And Beside everything, you need to make sure that the tuning and the calibration of your hair sensors and the motor is done, like written here. So the goal of the code that I'm going to show you later on is controlling the speed of the BLDC here in some sort of programmed way. So you see the code starts by defining an object, defining some critical parameters for solo, like the switching frequency of the, uh, the board, the number of poles of the motor, the current limit the tuning of the speed controller gains, KP and KI, and then it will start by initializing the, the serial port that is used for monitoring only in Arduino. And later on, it will go through actually initializing the CAN communication through the SPI. So here you can see we have a chip select pin that is the pin of the Arduino that selects the uh, actually chip select of the SPI line of the uh, the CAN shield and we have the initialization of the CAN open with the address of the device, address of solo there. Right now the address of solo is set at 0 or 1. If you set it at 0, solo considers it at 1 because in CAN open the address of 0 is reserved for the host. So and then the code goes on by establishing the communication, putting all the parameters that are necessary on solo, as mentioned the PWM frequency or the switching frequency, the current limit, the number of poles of the motor, defining for solo that what modes of operation it will be in. Now we are gonna control everything digitally. So we need to just put the command mode into digital mode. We are selecting the motor type, 
we're selecting the feedback control mode that is actually the motor that is operating with HAL sensors, setting up the speed control again, and finally putting the whole system in a speed controlling mode. Then there is a part of the code here that you can actually do the motor identification. Motor identification is not necessary to be done every single time that you're running the code. It's something that should be done only one time ever as long as you don't change your motor. So here I've commented it, but if you want to run it, you can do it. Then the loop starts. The loop is pretty simple. It's just doing, defining a direction of rotation, setting up a fixed speed of 1,500 RPM for the motor to stay for two seconds. And then it changes the direction. But this time, within this loop that you see here, we are kind of increasing the speed of the motor all the way from 600 RPM to 1,500 RPM and increasing it actually one RPM per millisecond that you can see here. The delay of the loop is one millisecond, which is a very impressive delay for the communication using Arduino. And then the speed after reaching to the, let's say through a slope to the 1,500 RPM will be changed to 1,000 RPM after a delay of two seconds. And then the cycle repeats itself. So if I run the code, you'll see through the serial monitoring that I can read the speed and the torque of the motor online. And you can see there will be different values here, rapidly changing. So it's a bit hard to see what's happening here. To understand it better, we will be going to motion terminal because we want to see the plots with let's say high resolution. So I go to motion terminal, I get connected to my solo unit. After that, you see solo reads all the parameters. You can set all the parameters that you already set in the code also in motion terminal. Most of the parameters like the motor type, the switching frequency or any other parameter that you saw there, you can also set them here. But this is not what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna tell you that the Canobed baud rate actually can be set through motion terminal through this parameter that you can see here. Right now, we are operating at one megabit per second, but you can change it. The only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the monitoring section of the motion terminal, and I'm gonna look at the, the two parameters that I'm interested in. Firstly, the speed. So this is actually the profile that we are generating in the code that is working like this. It starts, the motor starts with a speed like 1000 RPM, then it goes to 1500 RPM in the same direction, then the direction will change, and we go to a speed like around 700-800 RPM, and then it will accelerate down to 1500 RPM, and then again the, the loop starts over and over again. You can have a look also on the IQ parameter, that is the torque consumed in the motor, and you see the torque is actually having a value near one amp because here you see I'm putting the, the brake into the loop. So the brake is consuming around 150 milliamps, which will result in 0.1 Newton meter on the shaft of the motor. I can increase or decrease this value. But for now, the interesting thing for me is looking at to the plot and see how the behavior of the system is changing. So I'm monitoring the system by USB and Arduino is sending through can open all the commands that you see here that are happening. Please remember that we have an extensive article which is called Arduino Library Hello World where you can find all the materials that you need to work with uh, Arduino IDE, UART and of course also can open and you can find out the wirings there, you can find out about the tips, how to run the code and all those things you might need during your process. So please visit our website, please subscribe to our channel, have a good day.